we've made lots of progress in increasing corn yield and the main thing that we have done, uh, whether it's farmers or crop advisors or an extension, is increase those, those seeding rates, increase the stand density. The reason that's possible is that corn's pretty simple. And it just produces that single ear. It's got lots of seeds on that, on that ear. And what companies have done for us is selected those hybrids that tolerate those high stands. And so they maintain that ear size at high populations. And, uh, and so I put easy in quotes because I don't want to tick off any corn people. But compared to soybean, it's been relatively easy. Soybean's a whole different critter. Lots of different pods, lots of pods, very few seeds per pod. And it is not easy to, it's reasonably easy to increase ear number it's almost impossible to increase this pod number. This is a graph that I put together that I share with farmers and, and with the advisors in my, in, in, my, uh, in my state. And it just helps me focus on when the plant is doing what that's related to yield. And all these things are related to yield. At the x-axis is the percent of the life cycle of that plant. So it's just on a percentage basis. So it's not days or anything like that, just a percentage. And then these are the various things that it goes through and the length of those bars, at least an attempt to show the time period and the length of that period when various things are happening, okay? And so number, I've mentioned a number of nodes already on the main stem and on the, on, on the branches. That's happening, you know, obviously, relatively soon. Number of nodes, you know, maybe 21, 20, 19, 18. That stem is growing, maybe not all the way to R to the R5 when seed filling begins, but but for a large portion of that of that uh, life cycle, uh, almost half probably. I got a little bit higher than that, but but it's producing nodes. Uh, we'll talk about branches here in a little bit. Uh, we'll talk a little bit how flowers are produced. One of the things that's different in corn and soybean. Corn, you may actually not have all those flowers pollinated, right? On an ear, those are female flowers, and when they're pollinated, they become kernels, and you get, it's a cross-pollinated plant, and so you've got, you know, pollen flying everywhere, and it may or may not, uh, um, a silk may or may not be receptive to that pollen, or something may happen to the pollen tube as it grows down through that silk. In other words, not every kernel potential kernel uh, gets pollinated on an ear of corn. Soybean, perfect flower, stamens, anthers right next to each other. 99% of those flowers get pollinated. Okay, so again, not, it makes a whole lot of difference to our, to our clients, but they will in fact get pollinated. Now the big thing that happens in, in soybean is the number, I, I use abortion or abs abscission here. Uh, I say flowers and pods, but technically, once it's pollinated, it's a pod. Okay, so really what's falling off the soybean plants, and we'll talk about it toward the end of the session, is, is pods. They may be small, very tiny, but uh, maybe 70%, 60%, 70% of those will, uh, of the flowers will not become pods that are going to end up in somebody's combine. So tremendous amount of precision. 60 to 70 percent of, uh, of the flowers that are produced will not make it as pods, okay? Seeds per pod, I don't really get too excited about that. Uh, it does, you know, obviously affects uh, seed number. Um, you can in fact have uh, seeds that begin and then abort, so you can see little gaps, little misses in pods if you look at it closely. And then of course seed weight is what happens toward the end of the end of the life cycle. Now this is across a longitudinal section of a of a dicot plant, it's not soybean, but it, it'll it'll help us out here. This is the apical meristem, right? We talk about the growing point, and the reason it's a growing point is that's where cell division is occurring, right? So this these little cells here will will initiate the leaves, will initiate the stem, all the xylem, phloem, all that stuff gets initiated from cells that are produced right here, okay? I mentioned the axillary buds. These little dots right here, those are axillary buds. This is gonna be a leaf at some time. Here's a leaf. 
There's a little bud that's just starting to form. Here's a bud that you can form, that, that you can see here. Uh, soybean would have three of those sitting there. Okay. The same bud can go either way, whether it can, you know, branch or, or, or flowers. Okay. <coughs> As this cell division is occurring there, there's a hormone. The class of hormones are called auxins that are produced there. You know, 2,4-D is an auxin, right? Uh, dicamba works kind of like a like an oxen uh, there are natural occurring oxens uh, in that in a plant those oxens then flow down into this stem okay if the concentration of the oxen is high that bud stays a bud if the concentration of the oxen is low that bud becomes a branch Okay, now why is that important? Well, sunlight affects the translocation of that oxen. So lots of sunlight will prevent the oxen, the oxen from flowing, meaning low concentration, meaning branches. Okay, so where would you have lots of sunlight get into a canopy? Sparse population. At the same time, you've got another signal from the environment, and that's photopyramid. Okay. Photo period is going to determine whether the bud becomes a flowering structure or not. Okay, we'll get out of the science here in just a little bit. Okay, but this this interplay. Now the organ on the plant that sees the photo period is the leaf. There's actually a compound in that leaf that reads the length of the photo period. Actually, it's the balance between the the light and the dark period. Okay, so it's reading that photo period, and when it is triggered when it sees a photo period that says hey I should be flowering it sends a signal down the petiole to that to that bud and signals you should become a racine a flowering structure an inflorescence so these buds are sitting there and you've got this interplay between a hormone that's saying or not saying to be a branch or not a branch and another uh, compound that's coming down to say whether it should become a uh, flowering structure or not. Okay? This is a graph that relates stand density to the number of nodes on the main stem and the number of nodes on the branches. Almost no effect on the main stem nodes, right? But the number of nodes on the branches changes dr dramatically. And that's just, you know, that's what we, we talked about. And uh, this is one of the reasons that's very difficult is you crowd those plants together to increase yield. Now what we've got here is stand density, so actual plants. The way we do the study is uh, we plant a whole bunch of different seeding rates, lots of different ones, not five or six, but lots of different ones. We go out when the plant's about two or three leaves uh, on it, we count the stand, and then we harvest that plot. Each of these dots is a single plot, so it's not been averaged by rep, and so you get a little bit more noise than what you're probably familiar with, okay? But each is a plot, and you get this kind of a curve. I've done this, I don't know, 20 sometimes. Um, almost always the same shape. And I don't know what happens here in Nebraska if you did the experiment, but I've done it in central Missouri, and I've done it down in the boot heel the very tip of the state, same kind of curve. If we get up around, and this, and this relates to cutting back seeding rates, if we get up to around 90,000 plants out there, I've captured almost the maximum yield in that field. This is the yield distribu distribution within a camp. So I've got yield increasing toward me. This is just height on that plant. So most of the yield is hung in that uh, bottom part of the top third and the top part, maybe the whole, but, but the top part of that middle third. That's where that, where the yield is. You know, when you think about corn, you think about uh, the leaves that maybe five or six above it are feeding that ear. In soybean, it's pretty much the, the leaf at that node is feeding those pods at that node. And so 
the part of that conversation is I think you need to protect those leaves and upper canopy. This is absorption of light through the through the uh, as you go down through the canopy. So I've got light amount right as a percentage of the light entering the canopy. This is in fact then the height of the plant. So much of that light is captured right right where that yield is is made. It makes sense. You know if we talk about sunlight. We almost always talk about, or we think about row spacing. Here's some plots of ours. They're Columbia. And I want to show you a graph of our results and see if this makes any sense. But um, in this particular year, if you looked down through this canopy, you could actually see a little bit of soil uh, in these 30 inch rows. You can't in the seven and a half inch rows. And, and there's clearly, you know, if you can see soil, you're not capturing all that light. So, so one of the things that row spacing does, not the only thing, but one of the, rows, the things row spacing does is capture that light sooner. Right? So if we look at the yield for our data, and we'll see how that jives with what you're familiar with, is of several years worth of data here. I got seven and a half inch rows, 15 inch rows, 30 inch rows. Um, most of the work is done in Columbia, which is COL, which would be the central part of the state, but also down in the Boot Heel, which is uh, our, our uh, research site down, way down in the actual Boot Heel of the state of Missouri. One of the reasons I did that is when I was in school, they said that row spacing doesn't matter in the south. <clears throat> but this is group, this is group five country, right? Group five adapted uh, soybeans. And so I call it the South, and, and we get the same response there as we did in Columbia. Now, not every year. I don't understand what happened that year. I just I just uh, looked at that data over and over and over again, and uh, I can't get it. Every time I look at it, it looks the same. I don't understand why it won't change on me. Uh, so it doesn't happen all the time, but in most cases, what we find is that 7.5 inch rows and 30 in, uh, seven and, a half in, and 15 inch rows yield the same, but on average, they're about nine or ten percent greater yield than than the thirty-inch rows. Let's talk a little bit about planting date. We'll see how our how our results uh, relate to y'all's. Yeah, I keep coming back to this light thing, and it's an important thing. This is the date of the year. This is the actual amount of light energy in a field there close to Columbia. Obviously it jumps up and down a little bit. This actually averages several years, but still jumps up and down. This is total light energy for the day. So there's two things that are happening as we come from spring to the first day of summer, right? Photo period is longer, but also the angle of the sun changes. So the sun's not brighter, but, but what that field sees is actually more you know, if you looked at noon on the uh, 20th of June and you looked at noon on the 1st of May, there would be a brighter light uh, on that field uh, in, on the 20th of June. So you've got, this is what's happening to energy. Now, I know I dwell on that too much, but, but energy is what we grow crops for. So here's our data on planting date. And I know Jim Speck uh, talks a lot about this. Uh, one of the things that planting date does is, um, is move the seed filling into the longer uh, uh, days of the year. So this is our response. Again, this is just Columbia work. Uh, and, and I've got the average of 12 experiments. If I put all 12 up there and I got a slide up that I show farmers because there's never, ne no year is the same. It varies all over the board. If I average it, this is what I get. And so you've got in April and early May, not much of an effect, but as we get into May, it starts to decrease in yield and that decrease becomes greater as we get later into that season. 